Welcome back. Today I'm going to connect this Westinghouse generator to a manual transfer switch on the side of the house. Once everything is connected, I'll take you inside, we'll put some loads on the generator, we'll take some voltage readings, we'll see how it performs. Right, Tim, did you copy that? That's going to be an indigo well. So here's what's going to happen. Generator's already been started, warmed up, it's ready to go. I'm gonna plug the extension cord into the generator. I'm gonna plug the other end of the extension cord into the transfer switch. Then I'm gonna take you inside. You'll see a couple of windows pop up on your screen. The top window will have two voltmeters showing, one showing frequency, the other one showing voltage. The bottom window will show this generator running. It'll have a little background noise going so you can hear what it sounds like when I load the generator up with appliances. That's all there is to it. Let's try to get this done before it rains. Well, ain't this absolutely comical? It hadn't rained in two weeks. I'm going to try not to talk through the whole video. First up is going to be the oven. I'm going to let these appliances run a couple of minutes. Let them run through the first heat cycle. Majority of this is is resisted loads, which is just fine for this generator. And now I'm going to turn on one burner. Next up will be the electric clothes dryer. The extension cord I'm using for this project is 10 gauge, 75 foot long, and it's got four conductors in it. It's rated for 30 amps, which is not ideal for this application, but it's a lot better than me having to drag this heavy generator around the other side of the house. In the electric panel, the only breaker that I turned off for the duration of this test was the water heater because I didn't want that heavy load coming on when I was testing these other appliances. All the other breakers were left on. I did turn the thermostat off on the central AC. Everything else is on and operating in the house like it normally would. This is what a typical load would look like in this house. This generator is equipped with a GFCI breaker that would trip every time I connected it to the transfer switch. In browsing around the internet looking for a solution, I ran across this service bulletin on the Westinghouse website. I followed these instructions, pulled the cover off the alternator. The layout and the color of the wires were a little bit different than what's shown here. After studying this for a few minutes and realized what they were trying to accomplish, I was able to do the same thing in the W Pro 8500. If you're not comfortable in taking the cover off the generator and making these changes, you probably should not.
And finally, the electric water heater, which is rated at 4,500 watts. As part of the torture test, I'll run the 4,500 watt electric water heater. I'll also run a 1,200 watt microwave, and I'll run the Keurig coffee maker. During this torture test, the refrigerator also comes on. We can see in this test that the extension cord is really struggling to transfer the power from the generator to the house. It's quite a load on the generator as well, because we can see the voltage on the generator is pushing down near 240. Even more telling though is that the generator is struggling to maintain 60 hertz. I think we've about reached the limits of this generator. Also, the refrigerator just came on. So that concludes the test. I'm gonna disconnect the main power when I do that, we'll see the generator idle down. I'll turn the fuel off to the generator and we'll let it run out of gas. If y'all are interested, I'll put up another video showing some sound pressure levels that I took. Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you like the video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.